Good afternoon and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Tuesday, the 1st of September 2020, and the time has just gone 12.10 British summer time. And it's been a fairly mixed uh, start to the European trading session. Uh, the FTSE 100 is greatly underperforming. Uh, banks and uh, and all stocks are, uh, are weighing on the, uh, on the British market. But it is worth noting, today is the first trading day of this week for the London Stock Exchange because it was a bank holiday in the UK yesterday, uh, so it was closed. Therefore, um, yesterday we saw uh, modest modest losses uh, on Eurozone equity markets. So we, we're now seeing, it's almost like the FTSE 100 is catching up with the negative sentiment that happened in continental Europe yesterday, even though we've seen a decent rebound in, uh, in Eurozone equity markets today. Uh, the German market for the DAX is doing fairly well uh, big, uh, on, on, the, on the back of a positive revision uh, to the German, to the German uh, uh, forecast for 2020. Um, we've also seen some mixed uh, economic indicators, uh, some mixed manufacturing figures, um, both from Asia and also uh, from Europe. Um, the Kaishin survey of Chinese, of Chinese manufacturing was um, was, was, was quite strong. It came in at its highest level since 2011. That's been uh, of assistance to both high-grade copper, the metal, and, and in turn, mining companies that are listed in London. Um, as far as the Eurozone, as far as Eurozone is concerned, things are a bit mixed. Um, the German figures were pretty, were, were reasonably, were, were reasonably um, in line with expectations and in terms of growth on the month, uh, where we've actually seen reasonably weak figures out of Spain. Uh, the, the best of the bunch was actually the Euro, um, was actually the UK in terms of European man manufacturing. Um, it hasn't been the most eventful uh, of, of, of trading sessions, uh, but we have seen a fairly decent move to the downside on the FTSE 100. Um, what I'll do uh, with this video, as I always do, uh, I'll quickly run through the week ahead. Then I'll talk about the major indices, the big currency pairs and commodities. So first things first, let's go to the week ahead article, which can be found on our website, uh, cmcmarkets.com and under insights. So I'll take a quick scroll down now. We can see here that tomorrow we have full year figures, full year figures from Barrett Developments, the UK home builder. Um, we also have Q1 numbers tomorrow from Brown, from Brown Foreman. Uh, they're the spirits company listed over in the US. They make the well-known Jack Daniels brand. On Wednesday, uh, we have the Beige Book update on the, from the US. We have second quarter numbers out from DocuSign on Thursday. Also on Thursday, we have a raft number of various countries around the world are posting their latest services PMI numbers. We also have first half figures from restaurant group, the London listed uh, food uh, restaurant chain on Thursday. Um, as we do every single Thursday, US jobless claims will be posted. Uh, and the highlight of the week is going to be US non-farm payrolls. Um, it's typically seen as the most important economic indicator of the month. Uh, and speaking of non-farm payrolls, um, feel free to sign up for the non-farm payroll webinar that I'm hosting. It can be found on our website, cmcmarkets.com, under insights, down here to webinars and event. Um, it's on Friday the 4th of September at 13.15 British summer time. Feel free to, uh, to, to sign up for that. Um, if you can't catch the, the live version of it, there will be a, a recording of it uh, on our YouTube channel and also posted to insights on our trading platform. And for those of you that don't know, insights can be found under news analysis, uh, second option down. So now that we've kind of run through the major events of the week, uh, let's take a look at what's going on on the, uh, on, on the big indices, starting off with the FTSE 100. Um, and as you'll see after I go through a few more indices, it's fairly clear that the FTSE 100 is like the weakest of the bunch as far as the big uh, indices in Europe and the US is concerned. So we can see here that since the lows of March has had a decent rally into June, uh, like many other major indices around the world, but we've seen a lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, and yet again, what, what, what could be another lower low. So in the last few months, we've been trending lower on the, on the FTSE 100. Um, we're currently trading in around 5,894. If you press on lower from here and we take out this area here in around 5,852. We could be heading back, back down toward this zone here in a 5,800. 
Note the kind of downward trend over the last few months. Uh, if you do press on higher from here, resistance could be encountered in around the kind of 6,000 mark, big psychological number. And if you go beyond that, resistance could come into play from this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, which comes into play at 61.30. And notice how on a few occasions that metric acted as resistance in the past. And if a metric has, has, has been of importance in the past, it makes it more likely it'll, it'll be of importance in the future, although there are no guarantees. Turning our attention now to what's going on over in Germany, like I said, the German market is is, uh, is doing well today um, on the back of a kind of positive revision to the German GDP forecast by the German government. Um, German market has, has a decent rally between late between late between late March and into July, where it hit a multi-month high, the highest level seen since February when the crisis began, the pandemic that is. But even though we haven't the highs of August haven't we didn't didn't take out the highs of July, it's still in the kind of broader upward trend. And while we hold above this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, it's likely that the wider upward trend is going to continue. If you press on higher from here and if we retake the August highs, that could put us on track for this area here, the high seen in uh, late July. And if you go beyond that, that could take us up towards in around the kind of 13,500 mark kind of a level of scene just as the beginning of the health crisis was kicking in in late February. If you do drift lower from here, support could be found from this blue line, the 50 moving average. Notice how on a few occasions it has acted as support in the past. And the 50 moving average comes into play at 12,764. And even if you have a kind of a sizable break below that, we could head back down towards 12,500. And it's only really if you're going to take out this red line here, the 200 moving average in that 12,194, because then we'd be get, kind of getting a bit concerned because that's, that's, let's face it, it has been on a, you know, a major upward trend the last few months. So now that we've covered the big markets in Europe, let's take a look at what's going on over in the US, starting off with the Dow Jones. What well, I said anything about the Dow Jones, um, although yesterday you know it did push higher, it ended firmly in the firmly in the red. And even though the wider trend to the upside is still very much in play, keep in notice the, the price action on yesterday's candle. And we can see here that they got a body of the candle, this red rectangle here, completely engulfs. And this body here, this is the body of the of the uh, of, of Friday's candle. And notice how we have a few days um, um, in a row where the market's pushed higher. Then we have quite an aggressive move to the downside. So it appears that this candle here, yesterday's candle, has the potential to be a bearish engulfing. Um, so if that is the case. We could be looking at um, moving lower. So we have the lows of today's session have taken out the lows of yesterday's session so far but obviously this session isn't over so it depends where things go so if we do have for, for, for this to be confirmed that it's a bearish um, re, uh, reversal we would need to see the market continue to move lower from here if that is the case we could look at heading back toward this general zone here in around 28,200 and if we go below that we could be heading back towards 28,000 itself big psychological number but before we get kind of carried away with ourselves, let's just take a look at how far we've traveled. So the, the, the market has been in a solid upward trend for months. The wider trend is clearly still very much in, in, intact. So if we do press, if, if we have a bit of a short term move to the downside, there's nothing to say that the wider upward trend of the last few months isn't going to continue. Uh, so if we do press on higher from here, we could be looking at testing the highs of yesterday. And if we go beyond that, we could then be looking at heading up to, towards levels last seen in mid to late February in, in around 28,900. That is the, the Dow Jones, but let's take a look now at the S&P 500, which is in better shape. The S&P 500 has just been on a steady run uh, the, the last few sessions, you know, quite often racking up uh, fresh all time highs. We're still in fairly decent shape. You know, we're expecting the, um, the S&P 500 when cash trading gets underway to open uh, north of 3,500. So the kind of the sentiment continues to be positive in that. So if we do press on higher from here, we could be looking at re retesting yesterday's highs in around 3,526. And if we go beyond that, we then be kind of in fresh all time high territory. We could be looking at targeting 3,530, 440, and so on and so forth. 
If we do look to, to move lower from here, we could find support from this zone here in around 3,480. And if you go below that, this zone here in around 3,450. But to be honest, you know, we have had a phenomenal run the last few months. So it's only really, even if you have a very aggressive pullback, we can still head back towards 3,350 or even, even the 3,300 self and still be uh, within the wider upper trend. Uh, take a look now at the big currency pairs, starting off Euro dollar. So Euro dollar has, continues to be in a kind of wider upward trend. If you take a look at the price action, we're, uh, we're not too far away from the kind of psychologically important 120 mark. We're still very much in an upward trend. In fact, today's level, if I'm not mistaken, the last seen over two years ago, it's about a 28 month high. We're looking back at levels last seen in May, um, 2018 for um for for euro dollar so it's it's clearly in um it, it continues to be in, in a strong upward trend. If we do press on higher from here, because we're currently in around one spot 1981. If you press on higher from here and we take out 120, we can then be looking at heading up towards one spot 2140. Uh, this area here, a price last seen in April, uh, 2018. And if you do see any move to the downside, we could see potentially see fresh buyers enter the fall because let's face it, buying on the dip in the last few months has been a fairly popular strategy. So if we do move lower from here, this general area here in around kind of 118 down to around uh, one spot 17.55, that area there could act as support or possibly even down towards this price area here in around one spot 16.96. Take a look now what's going on with pound dollar. Once again, the, the, the dollar is weak across the board. Uh, so, so, so today's session, the pound has hit its highest level um, since mid, mid December. That was on the back of the UK election um, when the, the exit poll came out and showed, pointed towards a large conservative victory in the general election, which turned out to be the case. So we're talking about, once again, multi-month highs on pound dollar. The trend is clearly very much to the upside. If you press on higher from here, because we're currently in round one spot, 3468. If you press on higher, press, press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the December highs in at one spot, 31, one spot, apologies, one spot, 35.15. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at heading back up. To, well, there's really a whole lot of clear areas of, um, of, um, of, of old old resistance, potentially new, new old support, potentially new resistance, but in around the kind of one spot 36 area, the levels last seen in May 2018, uh, that kind of one spot 36 zone could act as resistance. Uh, if you do move lower from here, we saw a bit of consolidation in the kind of one spot 32 zone. And if you go below that, we could be looking at the kind of head back towards the kind of big important number of one spot 30. Looking to wrap things up shortly now, coming on to commodities, starting off with gold. So we just talked about the weakness in the US dollar. Gold is traded in US dollars, so the decline in the dollar has been a great assistance to gold recently. So we can see here that gold, you know, hit a fresh all time high um, only at, at the beginning of April. Uh, we obviously had quite an aggressive sell off in the middle of said April and August. We had quite an aggressive sell off in the middle of August. Um, but if you look at the last the price action in the last few sessions, we've seen a few higher highs and higher lows. So the, the market is nudging higher yet again. We're currently trading at 1988. If we press on higher from here, we could be looking like heading towards 2000 or the recent highs of of uh, of of, um, of 2015. This area here, and if you go beyond that, we could then be looking at retesting the all-time highs. Um, any move to the downside in, go in gold could find some support from the, uh, the late August lows in around 1902, 1900. Uh, and if you go below that, you know, the 50 day moving average isn't too far away behind in at, eight, at, in at 1893. It's only really if you kind of take out the lows of mid August in at 18, 18, uh, 63, could then we, we get a bit concerned and should that be the case, we could see a return back towards the 1800 mark. Lastly, I'll take a look at uh, Brent crude oil, the November contract. So the oil market has gone a under, has undergone a large, huge recovery from uh, from late April, but not to hit you know multi month highs, five month highs in August. To be honest, it's been reasonably quiet ever since then. Um, we've seen 
the, the lows get higher, but we haven't really seen a whole lot of corresponding higher highs. So the bias remains to the upside. We're currently trading at, um, south of $46 a bar or in around 45 spot 89. If you press on higher from here, we could be, and, and if, we if we take off the recent highs, um, which come into play around 46, 46 spot 60, we could then be looking at heading up towards $50 a bar, which is gonna be, be the next big next big number to look out for. Uh, any move to the downside in uh, in, uh, in all could fight support for this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, and that comes to play at 44 spot 25. And if you do have a fairly sizable correction, you can head back toward this zone here. On a few occasions, this area in around 42 acted as support. That's all from this week. Um, thank you for listening. Stay safe. Have a good trading week and good luck.